Hey everyone, welcome back. I have a couple ideas rolling around in my brain, and all of them requiring an air pump that's a little larger than an aquarium pump, but I don't need a full-on compressor. And that pretty much leads into what I have in front of you. I present to you my 3D printed air compressor. The prototype version currently has a 380 motor on it, connected to a USB port, which is 5 volts. With this motor setup, I get about 1.25 PSI, which isn't much, and I don't really know the flow volume. Either way, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it should be enough to work for a couple projects I have in mind for the future. As you can see in front of you, it makes enough pressure to lift a 10 pound weight with these two 3 liter dialysis bags. If you'd like to try making this yourself, I will be sharing the files down below in the description. Here I have all the parts printed for my second pump and I'm going to assemble it here for you. And we're going to start by mounting the bottom foot onto the bottom of the frame. To mount the foot to the frame I'm using M4 by 5mm screws. Now to mount the bearing to the frame, in this version has no bearings, it's just a bushing. But hopefully by the time you see this I'll have versions with bearings ready to print. To mount the main bushing to the frame, I'm using four M3 by six screws. I'm using cap head screws, but you could use whatever you want. The next step is to mount the motor. In this case, I'm using an RS450 motor from a printer, which likes to run on 24 or 48 volts, depending on your version. I plan on posting the files with a 380 motor, a 450 motor, and a 550 or 540 motor mounting options. With no ball bearings and just the shafts running on plastic, a little bit of lubricant will help, and I find Vaseline works good for this, especially if this is going to be inside. It's a little bit more pet and indoor house safe. With everything lubed up, I'm going to slide the crank into the bearing. For the shaft material, I'm using stainless steel straws. Just cut and pressed into the plastic parts with no real machining work. Six millimeter shafting could be used, but the straws work nicely and are probably accessible to more people. With the connecting rod just slipped over the crank, we're ready to install the piston. But before we do that, I'm going to tension the rings a little bit to just kind of spring the plastic out a little bit. Now all of this being out of PETG, I'm not exactly certain how it's going to work if you try to print this out of PLA. Make sure before you install the piston to the connecting rod that the piston slides very nicely in the cylinder. You don't want to make it too loose though, if it's too loose it won't seal. Then once you have that all done, the wrist pin is an M4 by 20 cap screw. Now you might have some other screws that will fit in here, but I designed this specifically for the cap screw. Now to install the cylinder, make sure you don't catch the ring and usually you'll I rotate it around and find a, the smoothest spot. This can be brought to you by the inaccuracy of 3D printers and well the inaccuracy of my finishing job. To fasten the cylinder I'm using 4 M3 by 6 millimeter cap screws. Although in the video I'm getting low on fasteners so I only use two. Just to note, after bolting the cylinder to the frame, it might deform the cylinder wall slightly, making the piston a little bit sticky at the top and the bottom of the travel. Since this one is a little sticky at the bottom after bolting it together, I have my motor wired to a plug and I'm going to let it run free air style for a little bit and just kind of let it chew its own groove. This is standard fare for any sort of piston reciprocating machinery, so it's to be expected. Thank you. 
as I squeeze the sides, it speeds up a little bit, which kind of proves that it's not quite round. Well, either way, it'll wear itself in over time. Now for the head. There's three 3D printed parts for this, and I make up a couple gaskets using my laser engraver. Well, the wife's laser engraver, actually, but shh, don't tell her I used it. But before I show you that, I lapped the three printed parts on a piece of glass with some sandpaper in between. That way they're almost perfectly flat and it helps with the sealing and the action of the reed valve. Here at the laser, I'm cutting the top head gasket first and then we're going to move on to the top jug gasket or the head gasket, the actual head gasket. These are just cut out of construction paper, which the uh, laser engraver makes short work of. For the reed plate, I'm using a silicone sheet that's normally used to keep hot glue off of a table. However, I'm sure this could be printed from TPU or used any other flexible material for this. In fact, I'm sure the silicone isn't really the best, but it does seal rather nicely. As well as this stuff seals, it's really hard to cut. Silicone handles the heat very well and I'll have to do multiple passes across this to get this to actually cut. But it still does a fairly nice job. Now that I have the gaskets cut and the reed valve made, I'm going to assemble the head. The reed valve goes in between the two white plates, which are otherwise mirrored from each other. One side of the small opening holes has a chamfer on it, and make sure that goes to the opposite side of the reed valve itself. With the paper gasket for the top cover, I'll add the top cover to the stack as well. Make sure the top cover ports are oriented in the way that you want to use them. If you have it backwards, it'll draw a vacuum. To hold this all together, I'm using four M3 by 20 cap screws. If everything prints properly, they should just slide through the holes and then thread into the top of the cylinder itself. Make sure to put the cylinder top gasket on as well. With everything together, I'm ready to test it out. And you can see it's rather stiff. Bolting the head to the cylinder also deforms the cylinder bore slightly, which kind of deforms the whole thing. I don't really have a good way of solving this problem other than just letting it run and wearing itself in. Now this might overheat the motor so you might have to do this instance or have the output of the pump cooling the motor. Now for a closer look at the original prototype, this one has a little bit of a flywheel. It kind of works better when I'm using the lower powered motor, but it probably wouldn't be a problem if I was using a voltage a little higher than USB fed 5 volts. However, it's kind of neat to have a little pump like this running off of USB, runs off a battery bank, or pretty much anywhere you want it, even off a solar panel if need be. Well, if you notice, this one has a different head than the one I just assembled. This is the second head design, which has a port for in and out, so you can connect to whatever you want, draw a vacuum, or the pressure. I also have a higher flow variant, which might not seal as well and create as much pressure as it might flow back a little bit or take longer to seal. But for applications that don't need as much pressure, such as a remote cooling system for a 3D printer, which I think would greatly benefit from the flow versus the pressure. So like I said earlier, the files will be available in the description. I have a few upgrades in mind. Some of them are going to end up in the files and some of them I'm going to keep for future videos. But I'll give you a little sneak peek at something that may be coming down the pipeline in a future video. 
And that's about all I have for you guys this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and maybe a few of you will try and build it. I attempted to make this as machinist-free as possible, and I'm sure all of the gaskets could be printed from TPU, and I'll add those files into the uh, list in Thingiverse. And if you did like this video, do all the social media stuff and uh, help spread my channel around. Thank you. Have yourselves a good one, guys. Take it easy.